Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 8th grade concept of visualizing real numbers. This is standard 8.2a in the great state of Texas and we are using item number 15 off the 2018 released star test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and then we will look at our answers together. So we have four different Venn diagrams here, and we are looking to correctly represent the relationship between just these two rational numbers and irrational numbers. Now what we're not going to get is any definition of either of those. So these are going to be some vocabulary words you are going to need to know going into this particular problem. But that's what we're here for, and let's take a look at our four different Venn diagrams. And you see that in all of them, you do have real numbers on the outside. So real numbers is always going to be this box. And let's go ahead and define real numbers. So a real number is a number that can be displayed um, on a number line. It's, it's shown as, can be shown as a distance along a number nine. So that's pretty big. That's almost all of them, you would think. Why would any number not be able to be displayed? On a number line, well, there are going to be some imaginary numbers uh, that you'll get into in high school that are used for, you know, different types of calculations, and those cannot be displayed on a number line. So most every number you've ever interacted with up to this point in your life has been a real number because you could put it on a number line. Now, within the set of real numbers are two subsets, right? It's going to be uh, the rational and the irrational. And our question is, how do those two interact? So if you look at A, you see there's no interaction. There's no overlap at all, right? B has got just a little bit of overlap between the rational and the irrational. C and D both have one completely within the other, just depending on if you want the irrational on the outside or the rational on the outside. So now let's get to it. Let's take a look at our rational numbers. All right, so our rational numbers can be viewed as ratios. So that's the easiest way to think of it, as a ratio or a fraction, right? So any number that you can represent as a fraction. So literally fractions like one-fourth, right? Uh, if you want to do like 25%, right, we can turn that into a fraction if we wanted to. Um, even if you wanted to do something that's uh, like uh, repeating, like four thirds, right? That would be one and one third, but you can put it as a ratio. Um, you know, if you wanted just to do 0 0.37, we could easily turn that into a fraction, 3,700. So those are the rational numbers. Now within the rational numbers, right? I'm going to kind of do it like this. It's going to be kind of like a strange sideways Venn diagram. We've got a smaller set. We've got integers. All right, so your integers are going to be whole numbers, right? Positive or negative, negative 7, 8, 3. Within that, you've got a smaller number of, you've got the uh, whole numbers. Or you can also call them your uh, natural numbers. And they're weird because they just include zero. They're all positive. They're all positive integers, one, two, three. But you have to include that zero because that smallest one is going to be your counting numbers. And that's just one, two, three. So that's just your counting numbers right there. And it's just the same as the one outside of it. You just don't include zero. When we teach kids to count, we don't start with zero, we start with one. Now, your irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be shown as a ratio. So pi, square root of two, things like that. And you know what? Look at how I showed them. They do not interact. There's no overlap between the two because these cannot be shown as a ratio. They're opposites, which means our answer here is going to be A.